And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Canada. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vice President, uh, Deputy Secretary General, uh, colleagues. Uh, no issue since 1945 has preoccupied this assembly more than that of the Israeli and Palestinian question. Canada has played an active role since the earliest days of the conflict. We supported in the 1940s the principle of two states for two peoples. We led in the establishment of the Suez Peacekeeping Force in 1956 and have worked hard since that time to address the underlying causes of the conflict. And we remain ready and willing to respond to the needs of the parties in the interests of peace and the interests of security. It would be an understatement to say that like everyone in the chamber today, we are deeply troubled by the ongoing violence in Gaza, the West Bank, and Israel. The conflict has over the last several days led to significant loss of life among civilians. The toll particularly on women and on children has already been far too great. The news that peace may be emerging from decisions of governments both uh, in Israel and elsewhere is good news, but it can only be a start. We continue to urge utmost restraint from all sides, and we strongly support the work of the UN and other countries aimed at negotiating and maintaining a ceasefire and restoring calm. It's important to remember that thousands of lives have been lost since 1945. And these lives are not just numbers. We've heard many numbers and statistics today. It's important to remember that these are real people with families, with hopes, and with dreams. And may I also say that it's also important to remember that there have been losses of life on all sides of this conflict. That loss should move us all to take action. We are calling for immediate de-escalation for a protection of civilians, and yes, for an end to all violence. We call for a resolution of the underlying causes of the conflict and we call for peace, mutual recognition, and mutual respect. Mr. President, let me be clear. We stand firmly with both the Israeli and the Palestinian people in their right to live in peace, in security, and with dignity, without fear, and with their human rights fully respected. We strongly support the work of the UN, Egypt, Jordan and the United States to negotiate a ceasefire and to maintain the freedom of religion and belief at the holy sites in Jerusalem. The indiscriminate barrage of rockets fired by Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad into Israel are completely unacceptable and must cease immediately. They put the safety of civilians, indeed the lives of civilians, not only at risk, but have cost lives. They put the security of airspace and shipping lanes at great risk. The material and financial support to these groups that are listed as terrorist organizations by Canada must end. We strongly support Israel's right to live in peace with its neighbors within secure boundaries and its right to assure its own security. This right also comes with the immense responsibility and obligation to act in accordance with international law. 
The use of force has led to significant civilian loss of life, and we must continue to urge the greatest of restraint and respect for life on all sides. Nous sommes également profondément préoccupés par l'évolution de la crise humanitaire à Gaza. Ces derniers jours et au milieu de la pandémie de COVID-19, nous dé dénombrons plus de 70 000 Gazans vivant comme personnes déplacées à l'intérieur de leur propre pays, dont plusieurs d'entre eux forcés de se réfugier dans les écoles de UNRWA dans les conditions désastreuses. Les civils de Gaza sont actuellement confrontés à des pénuries de médicaments, de nourriture, de carburant et d'autres produits essentiels dans la vie. Nous reconnaissons qu'Israël, maintenant autorisé l'entrée à Gaza de convois humanitaires, et nous demandons instamment à toutes les parties de continuer à faciliter l'acheminement en toute sécurité de l'aide humanitaire à Gaza et de veiller à ce qu'elle parvienne aux personnes les plus vulnérables. Il est totalement inacceptable, Monsieur le Vice-président, de voir les travailleurs et les installations de soins de santé et d'aide humanitaire sous le feu des armes. Tous les efforts doivent être faits pour assurer leur sûreté et leur sécurité. Le droit international humanitaire doit être respecté par toutes les parties. Canada also reiterates the fundamental importance of protecting journalists and press freedom. Journalists and media workers are the cornerstone of any fair, strong and vibrant society. Must be free to do their work without any fear. Violence against journalists is completely unacceptable, especially in volatile contexts where they are risking their lives to do their jobs. Furthermore, we remain gravely concerned by the continued expansion of settlements, of demolitions and evictions, including the ongoing cases in Sheikh Jarrah and Silwan. These actions impact families and livelihoods. They do not serve peace, to put it mildly, and are a violation of international law. Consistent with our longstanding position, which has been consistent since 1967 in Resolution 242, we do not recognize permanent Israeli control over territories that were occupied, occupied after the Six-Day War in 1967. Canada believes that we must do everything possible to achieve a negotiated agreement that will settle the issues that are still in dispute. Mr. President, regrettably and connected to the current situation in the region, we have observed an increase of hatred, including anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and anti-Arab sentiments at home and around the world. It is our collective responsibility, each and every one of us, to fight hatred and to condemn it in the strongest possible terms. We are committed to standing against hatred and discrimination in all their forms, and we're also committed to working with our domestic and our international partners to promote and defend pluralism, human rights, inclusion at home and abroad. Let me assure you, Madam Vice President, Mr. Vice President, that Canada is committed to the goal of a comprehensive, just and lasting peace in the Middle East, including the creation of a Palestinian state living side by side in peace and in security with Israel. We will always support efforts for a two-state solution. And we remain firmly committed to advancing democracy, human rights, equality, inclusion, and international law at home and around the world. For decades, this conflict has caused much pain, much pain, and now more pain, to both Palestinian and Israeli families, and has imp impacted the social fabric in the region, 
and indeed has affected the politics of the world. Mutual recognition and mutual respect. Recognition that both parties have a right to their home and their place in the Middle East. Recognizing that both and all of us must respect the positions, the views, the politics, the religion, the ethnicity of the other. These are the critical foundations for a lasting peace. We urge all members of this General Assembly to remain engaged in any efforts that can bring a peaceful and a sustainable resolution to this devastating conflict. Thank you very much.